Hi there, my name is Vic Veer. I'm an ENT consultant surgeon working for the National Health Service in England. This video is all about how to tie a surgical tie because in one of my previous videos, I showed a snippet of me tying ties and some people have asked me, how do you do that quickly? You'll see from the video just about here that there are actually two different parts of this tying technique. And so although it looks like I'm doing the same thing going backwards and forwards, it does actually slightly alter as you do each one. To try and make this a bit easier to understand, I've got a rolling pin and I've sellotaped that down to my dining table and I've got some different colored shoelaces, which will hopefully make it easier for you to understand what I'm trying to show you. You can then practice on surgical ties. Okay so this is the first tie what I'm going to do is going to grab the string with my right and left hand and then I'm going to make the black tie taut with my index finger and my thumb. Using my second finger I'm going to tuck it underneath the black tie and then grab it between my two other fingers and pull it through the little hole and then tie it down. Now let's do that again in slow motion you can see here I'm holding this black string with my thumb and pulling it taut with my index finger. I'll do that again for you here. And now I'm making a cross with the white string. So now what you're going to do with your spare second finger is curl it around the white string like that, just in front of your thumb and ring finger. And once it's gone through behind that black string, you're going to need to push that second finger through the hole and then slowly straighten up that finger. Now between the index and the second finger, you're going to grab the black string and then at the same time, release the black string with your thumb and fourth finger. Now you can continue pulling with the index and second finger and get a better grip by using your thumb a little bit later. Now all you have to do is pull the two strings and tie down the knot. Right, now we're onto the second tie. This time we're going the other way around. Hold that black tie with a pincer grip using a karate chop action. Cross over the white tie again with the middle finger. Curl it round that hole. Straighten it back up. Hold it with those two fingers and then pull it through. Now as before, let's do that in slow motion so you can see it in more detail. So you can see here, this time we're holding the black string between the thumb and the index finger. Now because we're coming down on top of the black string this time, we're going to use a karate chop action to pull that string taut. Now that we're in the right position, you can pull the white string over and make that cross that we made before. Almost like last time, we're going to use that second finger, curl it down over the white string and then tuck it underneath the black string through that hole next to the index finger. And at that point, you can start straightening out that second finger. Now you can let go with the pincer grip and hold on to the black string between your second and ring finger. Now pull the black string underneath the white string through the hole. Again, you can hold on to that black string with your thumb to get a better grip. And you've now completed your second tie. I would really start off slowly doing each movement very deliberately and slowly and accurately. The speed will come later, so just keep practicing. Because the more you get this into muscle memory, the more instant it becomes and the quicker and the slicker it looks and you end up looking more confident in front of your consultant or whoever is trying to train you. A point to remember in these situations is also that you mustn't make the ties too tight. I certainly did this when I was starting out. I was making the ties so tight that really all I was doing is cheese wiring through these arteries and vessels and then making them bleed again afterwards. You only need to make them tight enough to close a blood vessel, which isn't really that tight at all. It's far more important to get your technique correct rather than looking cool and doing this very quickly because what you don't want to do is have a poor technique and allowing the sutures to slip and therefore cause bleeding afterwards. What I'll show you now is what happens when you only learn one of the throws. If you only do one throw at a time or one tie at a time, you end up with a slip knot as you can see here. And it's called a slip knot because it slips right through and therefore the blood vessel just bleeds again later. Now compare this to the correct technique and you'll see that the knots come down very nicely, very neatly. And there's going to be no slippage at all here. You need to decide which hand you want to practice learning how to tie with. Most people are right-handed, so this is your operating hand, and therefore you learn to tie with your left hand. This speeds up the process. That means you can carry on operating. If you need to tie something, you just palm that instrument and then tie what you need to tie. If, however, you want to become an ENT surgeon, unfortunately, you don't have that luxury of choosing which hand to learn to tie with. You need to learn how to tie with both hands because there are several operations where you need to tie with your left or your right hand. And so, unfortunately, you just have to learn how to do both. So hopefully you found this video useful and do subscribe because I'm trying to make more videos about how to become a better surgeon and also there are videos about snoring and sleep apnea and other ENT conditions.